Our next guest is an attorney who's argued before the United States Supreme Court, a contributing columnist to the Washington Post, a relentless critic of Donald Trump, and probably the most awkward plus one in White House Christmas party history. <laughs> Please say hello to George Conway. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Uh, I think I've expressed this to you through direct message, but I, to me, you and your wife, Kellyanne, this is the most interesting uh, thing, uh, relationship certainly, to come out of this uh, crazy Trump story that we've all borne witness to. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. Oh, yes, okay, I can see yes. that. Yes, yeah. It's, uh, well, let's start from the beginning, shall we? You, um, who knew Donald Trump first, you or Kellyanne? I think I did, but not really that well. Okay. Because what happened was um, I had bought an apartment at the Trump World Tower, which is this big thing at the end, uh, uh, right across from the United Nations, that uh, has 90 floors, but because it's Trump, it's really only 72. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, which is fine, though, because I bought one on the 80th floor, which is really only like the 65th floor. So, <laughs> so you know, I, I got something out so of it. So you got value out of it, too, sure. And then uh, what happened was there were some people who wanted to throw the Trump management company off the board. And so, um, and the Trump people had sold a certain number of condos that meant that they didn't really have control over the condo voting. And a bunch of us led a, an opposition to that because if they took the Trump name off, that was actually when it was worth something. They took the Trump name off, um, you know, we would have lost money. Now it's like you take, take Trump name off. Yeah, right. Stop. People are demanding but, it come right. off. <laughs> so um, we won. And then I, I, the next day, um, I get this phone call in my office. And my secretary peers in and says, Donald Trump is on the line. I say, oh, yeah, 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 Donald Trump. And I, and I answer the phone, and Donald Trump says, you were great. This was a. Uh, you have an amazing speaking voice. What kind of law do you practice? You know, really amazing, terrific, great thing you did. And that's sort of, you know, and then, he, then they asked me to go on to the board, uh, to the condo board. And I thought about it for about 30 seconds, or maybe five seconds. Like, I don't want to be in a freaking elevator and have people complaining about the water and this and that and all that stuff. And I said, no. D but then dumbass me, I come home and I say, you know, they wanted me to be on the board. My wife says, oh, yeah, go. You got to do it. You got to do it. I don't really want to do it. I don't want to deal with these people in the elevator complaining about stuff. He goes, and she goes, I'll do it. And that's where the trouble that's started. The end, it was the beginning of the American, American, American story. So, and when you, I mean, I've heard you say like that on election night, you were very, you were overcome with emotion well, when course Trump I was. I mean, won. my wife was, you know, he, she's a political consultant. She uh -huh. always wanted to do a major political camp, a uh, major presidential campaign. It was a pinnacle of her career. And this guy was done before she joined the campaign. And she turned it around. They got him to read the teleprompter. They got him to act like almost a normal human being for eight weeks. And that was enough for people who said, I, I don't want to vote for Hillary. So she's working, Kellyanne's working for Donald. When right. do you start now attacking him on Twitter? It took a while. A while. Uh, How many months? It took probably a year and a half, although there was one early tweet where he just said something so freaking insane that I just sort of tweeted something out, and then all of a sudden I got 50 phone calls, and the press was her calling, and, and I kind of tamped it down, and I kept my mouth shut for a while. What was it like that first time when you tweeted something, and then Kellyanne came home from work? Well, actually, <laughs> at the time, I was, I was still in New Jersey because we have four kids. It was Good just, move. For, for, yes. Yes. I should have stayed there. Right? <laughs> um, and we, we had four kids up in New Jersey, and she was down there by herself in an apartment in Washington. It was the spring, it was the spring of 2017. And immediately, I just get calls from her, calling, what did you do? What did you do? And then it turned out he wasn't all that mad about it. Uh, really? Um, yeah. 
Um, what about this? Trump tweeted, uh, referring to you, he said, loser. you Calls are a stone-cold loser and yes. husband from hell. Yeah. And this, by the way, is a guy who had sex with a porn star while his wife was pregnant. So yeah. for him to well, you, call you the husband from hell, yeah. that is meaningful. Yeah, you made, a, you, made a, you made that point very well when Eric Trump went after me like that. Said, oh, that's till, right. You yes. said, yeah, you said, you said uh, oh, wait till he hears what, he hears what daddy and... Uh, Uncle Uncle Stormy did, well, you know. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Uncle Stormy. <laughs> I mean, Is that, Stormy that, Daniels that, a man? Yeah, Holy yeah, moly! Yeah. <laughs> wow, that he, would have been a hell of a re yeah, revelation. Are very confusing, right? Um, so uh, his are I, me, my. You know. You know, and as a lifelong Republican, lifelong conservative, it must be strange for you now to be like somebody that. That liberals accept and, and and enjoy the tweets and get some kind of well, some liberals, a lot of other liberals just say you're playing both sides. It's a pro. You're you're doing this for, for money. You're doing this for to to you know to, to hedge your bets. And I don't understand where they get that from, um, because if you paid attention to what I've been saying pretty consistently now for about four years. Um, I mean, there's no air in it. I mean, I, I, I think the guy's a menace to the world. I think he's a menace to society. Do you think, as a lawyer and as somebody who's followed this very closely, do you think he will ever get punished for being this menace to the world and menace to society? Will he ever do any time? Uh, you know, I, mean, I think, well, I think he's going to be charged. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to be convicted, particularly... Which, with which of the many things? Oh, well, you know, it's like... Which is the biggest one? It's so hard. Meeny, meeny, miny, mo. I mean, it's really hard. Um, I think that the, the documents case is, is, is the one that's going to kill him. That's the one. The one, the one yeah, this, the stolen documents case. And it's like, you, you know, it's like, you're, say you're the United States Attorney of the Southern District of New York, and you're investigating the five families... Um, and you're trying to put together this massive RICO case with all these, you know, where you have the to put a chart on. Yeah. yeah. And um, you get this call from the NYPD saying, hey, you know, the head of the five families, we, we just got him, he's loading, he was loading jewelry off a tr onto a truck at Kennedy Airport. You got him dead to rights. I mean, you know, he's got the documents. He, he should have didn't belong, the documents didn't belong to him. He lied about them. He got his lawyers to lie about them. He, he, he defied a subpoena. And he did it for a year and a half. I mean, he, it's just, uh, the only thing that could make it worse is if he FedEx some of them to, to Putin. <laughs> well, that could be possible. You, you never know. Do you, and do you, why do you think he is announcing that? He said he's going to, he hinted strongly that he will announce he's going to run on Tuesday. Is that to avoid some kind of prosecution? Or? Well, I, I think it's going to be so that he can say, aha, they're indicting me because I'm running. Uh-huh. Okay. And, you know, I mean, he, I think he would have run anyway because I don't think he can help himself. He's a narcissistic sociopath. And, and, and you laugh. Go through, go through the, buy, buy the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of, of Mental Disorders, and, and you will see. You, check, check, you did this. Oh, you yeah, did we did. That. That's you right. Did that. You did that for, for, for um, narcissistic personality disorder, and you checked all nine boxes. And you could do it for antisocial personality disorder, which is sociopathy. He, you know, the man has no moral conscience. He lies like we breathe. Mm -hmm. He absolutely shows no remorse about anything. Um, and he violates laws and norms with reckless impunity. And he's, he's completely in, 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 impulsive. That's another one of the, you know, yeah. you only need three of those to, to be a winner. Oh, you, boy. You know. <laughs> I mean, you know, every, we all have the uncomfortable Thanksgiving dinner. You have that all the time. <laughs> well, it's great to meet you in person. Yeah. George Conway. You can see George's columns in the Washington Post. Thank you, George. We'll be back with Breland.